Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar, How April Cornell Reimagined Their Customer and Agent Experience for a Digital First World with Salesforce. My name is Michaela McCarthy. I'm the event marketing lead here at Neuroflash. I'm really excited for you to be joining us today for this amazing session. We got some awesome speakers who are here to talk about April Cornell and their Salesforce journey. Let me quickly go over some housekeeping rules. After this webinar, we'll be sending the recording to you all for your convenience. On the Zoom platform, to submit your questions, you'll see beneath the screen a bar pull up. In this bar, please click the Q&A button to submit questions anytime throughout the webinar. We'll have a 10 minute Q&A at the end for anyone to ask questions. First, I'd like to introduce you to our NeuroFlash team members that you'll be hearing from today. Jessica Asieto, Director of Customer Success, and Eric Sang, our Director of Solutions Engineering. Next, I'd like to introduce our awesome, Keller, uh, awesome customer who will be joining us today to share their Salesforce journey. Kelly Cornell, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at April Cornell. So without further ado, I'll hand this over to Jess to get us kicked off. Great, thank you, Michaela. And thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to be here to speak with you all about April Cornell's journey with the NeuroFlash and Salesforce. I'm so excited to be joined by my counterpart, Eric Zhang, and of course, uh, by Kelly Cornell of April Cornell uh, to really focus in on um, their journey and path with um, the Salesforce technologies that NeuroFlash has put together for them. So as you can see up on the screen here, we've got a, a jam-packed agenda for today, really focusing in on um, you know, the journey that April Cornell went through, both the pre-COVID and into kind of a digital transformation with Salesforce solutions. Uh, we'll show a bit of, a, of that technology with a demo by Eric Sang, um, and we'll really talk more about kind of what's next for April Cornell as a retailer that's um, truly uh, navigating uh, the, the new world and the new space um, that we found ourselves in uh, in the post-COVID world. So um, super excited to kind of get started. Uh, before we get into April Cornell's um, story and journey, I, I wanted to talk to you folks a bit about NeuroFlash for some of you who might be a little bit newer to us as an organization. We are a platinum ISV and consulting partner for Salesforce. Uh, we're also a certified Amazon Connect partner. Uh, what does all that mean? We are at the very highest tier uh, from a Salesforce partnership perspective. We implement uh, the solutions and our specialists in the solutions uh, that you see below. And we also are focused on building enhancements across the Salesforce platform uh, on the app exchange. Um, so really our focus is on digital transformation, which you'll hear a lot about today with um, Kelly and his uh, Kelly and his story. Um, we're focused heavily in the retail space, which again is uh, what we're going to be speaking about here today. Um, and what's unique to NeuroFlash is really that uh, we're focused on driving outcomes for organizations, so you can uh, better measure uh, what you're getting from a um, ROI perspective uh, with your investments with both NeuroFlash and of course with the, the Salesforce platform. Uh, so we're super excited to talk to you guys here today, really focusing in on the contact center transformation uh, as well as the voice and telephony transformation that uh, April Cornell has uh, has gone through. So uh, without further ado, um, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. We're super excited to have you. Um, I would love to, to have you tell the audience here a bit more about April Cornell and um, the background on, on your amazing company. Uh, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. And thanks for everybody for just listening today. And hopefully you guys can get a little something from our story. Um, you know, we're pretty early on in our digital transformation, um, but I think there's a few key moments where we made some good decisions and NeuroFlash was a, a really fantastic partner in that process. And I can tell you that to today, having made those decisions, it, it was really all worth it. So um, a little bit about us, April Cornell, we are a lifestyle retailer. It's a family business. Um, my mom started the business in 1975. She grew the business through brick and mortar and uh, we're a multi-channel retailer. So we're in a B2B space, um, we're in the e-commerce space and then we have a few of our own stores as well. So, you know, the past year has had us really kind of pivot to the digital space. Um, and I think one of the things that we realized really early on was that, you know, these legacy systems that we had in place were sort of failing and buckling under the pressure of new demand. Um, so we were so excited about where the business was going. We were excited that we were able to efficiently and at a good investment and a good ROI push into the digital space. But what we found was that our customer service tools and processes were beginning to, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, sort of bust at the seams. 
Um, and so that's really just, that's the beginning of our journey. And I think we had to kind of identify the problem and, um, and then, you know, just say, well, you know, we probably had four or five legacy systems within our, within our company. And I think, you know, my perspective really early on was that it was important to focus on the customer, essentially. If we could find ways to serve the customer better, um, to have their contact be robust, their sales history, history with us be robust, and our ability to service them be robust, then we were going to give ourselves the, the leeway, essentially, to be able to focus on the other parts of the business, which also needed attention. And I just say that as a, as, as a smaller retailer to know that um, at least from our perspective, that focusing on the customer first was the most important thing. Um, because if we could keep that funnel going, we were going to create sustainable growth within the organization. Um, so going, going into, uh, sorry, Jeff, um, going no. into the pre-COVID period, um, you know, we were really looking at, so we have a B2B business, so we're selling wholesale to boutiques. Uh, we have our own retail business. We have a few shops, and then we have our digital business. And we were, I think, probably like a lot of people who may be in a multi-channel space like this, um, allocating time and resources somewhat equally between those things. And, um, you know, I, I, I think I should stop for a second and say, what a crazy year, what a, you know, horrific year for so many people. And I, I don't want to gloss over any idea like that. And um, that's not what today is about. But, you know, we're talking about digital marketing and, and there's, obviously this event in the background, which has been really awful. So, you know, um, this is all kind of important stuff to take care of as a business, but I think it's important to understand the context in which these things are happening. So pre-COVID, uh, you know, we're allocating resources equally between those things. And then COVID came and digital was really our only way to keep advancing the company and growing the company. And we experienced what a lot of other retailers were experiencing. We were seeing 30 and 40% growth in orders and sales. And, um, you know, that brings us to March. And we were looking at, you know, I think in certain cases, either double or triple the investment that we had made in digital marketing from the year previous. And so under the weight of that, you know, between March, April, and May, we began to see that our internal systems were beginning, kind of as I said before, to buckle a little bit. And that's when we started our sort of research process into CRM tools. Awesome, thank you Kelly for that retrospective. I think that's really helpful, like you said, to give the context. Uh, of course, 2020 was a year that nobody saw coming. And um, it seems like even before that, you guys were seeing explosive growth um, and then really uh, took the opportunity to make that shift um, with a, an agile solution uh, with Salesforce. So um, would love to hear you talk more about, because I know in the beginning we uh, were discussing early on, you know, the, the pros and cons of different platforms and solutions for April Cornell. Would love to hear you talk about why Salesforce was the solution of choice um, for you to make that digital transformation. Yeah. Um, I think our process in looking for a CRM, so, you know, one was kind of what I was saying was identifying that the need was in the CRM space for us. So that this was the first tool that we really wanted to make a big digital investment in. And then as you go into the research for this particular function, Salesforce is the name that comes up, I think, again and again. And we had had um, people reach out over the years. I think they at one point had sent me a pinata or something like that. It was really fun that everyone got a kick out of. Um, so, so their name was top of mind, and I, I think there's a reason for that. Um, but you know, their Salesforce is consistently ranked within the top two or three um, for CRM companies in the world. And I, I thought that that was important to look at their service and understand why other clients were feeling that way, why major companies were going that way, and then to really understand whether the scale of a solution like that was going to be appropriate for our size of business. Um, I think. Oops, sorry, go ahead, Kelly. Think... <laughs> sorry, Jeff. Um, I think, you know, the next things that I thought were important. So we looked at other providers in this space. And then I thought that the sales team at Salesforce, and then this is, you know, NerdFlash included as we moved along through this process, were really speaking to the needs of our small to medium sized business and talking about use cases that were exactly where we were at that moment. 
So we were, you know, managing CRM essentially through a series of spreadsheets and toggling back and forth between the website and our customer records. And Salesforce was essentially saying, listen, we can unify this world for you. And here's what that looks like um, in the demos that we did with them. And that was really useful because we could immediately understand and we had our customer service team involved in demos pretty early on. We could immediately understand how it was going to save you know, I, I can't even be specific, but, you know, I think one of the things that Salesforce says, this will save 20% of your time. I can tell you it saved a lot more time than that. Um, so I think we thought the lowest bar was something that was going to give us the ability to be nimble um, in other areas of the business because we felt that our customer service side of the business was really well taken care of. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, you touched on all of the, the key parts that we, we worked together on early on in the um, discovery sessions alongside of Salesforce. And you started to get into it. But, you know, similarly, uh, as we kind of went through our partnership, what are some of the things that kind of stood out to you from a partnership perspective um, from the NeuroFlash side? You know, we always like to get feedback and understand how, how we're doing. And, um, you know, early on, we like to be involved to, like you said, just help guide those conversations around how we've helped other customers, but would love to hear from you to, to talk to us a little bit more about, you know, why not only Salesforce, but, you know, why NeuroFlash was that uh, right partner uh, to take the journey with. Yeah, I think really early on, we, um, well, we, we really knew that we were making our first big digital investment. And I think when you want to feel really comfortable in those spaces, you need either partners or providers, Salesforce in this case. Um, that allow you to say kind of when you sign that contract, I feel good about where I'm going to get at the end of this. And I think walking through this process with NeuroFlash, um, everything felt really transparent. Everything felt like we knew we were getting what we were getting out of the agreement. Um, we knew where we were going to end up. We had a scope, and, you know, in terms of timeline, in terms of what was going to be delivered at the end of it. Um, that allowed us to really make the case for it being a worthwhile investment for the business. Absolutely. And as you said, you know, this was a, a, a big investment for you guys to kind of take this journey. And uh, we're so appreciative you decided to, to select us to do that with. And we're so happy with the results you guys are seeing and that you'll, you'll continue to see with, you know, further innovation on the platform. Awesome. So um, kind of transitioning here, what we'd love to actually do is um, hand it over to my director of solution engineering, Eric Sang, who's going to showcase a bit more of a, a demonstration of some of the technology um, that Kelly's discussing here today that we implemented for April Cornell. Um, now keep in mind, this is not uh, their environment, their Salesforce environment, as we of course like to keep um, data privacy policies in mind, uh, but this is a, a replica, if you will, of a, a service cloud and service cloud voice uh, demonstration just to give you guys an idea of what um, this type of setup would look like for a retail company very similar to April Cornell. Uh, so with that being said, Eric, I will uh, hand it over to you to uh, go ahead and start with the demonstration. Great. Thanks, Jess. And thanks everyone for joining today's webinar. So as Jess mentioned, we're going to give you a quick uh, kind of overview or snapshot of some of the functionality that we've been partnering up with Kelly and his team on and really kind of reimagining and really, really thinking through what digital transformation on the Salesforce platform looks like for April Cornell here. Uh, and really going to kind of start the journey off and really uh, kind of go through how we envisioned case management being completed uh, for April Cornell customers. So what you'll see here on my screen, this is actually um, kind of a replica of a similar service cloud console that we've um, configured and built for Kelly's team here. Uh, and really the spirit of this is um, one of the third, first things that we saw uh, in working with Kelly's team was um, a really, really fantastic customer experience, but really kind of scattered across multiple systems. So lots of spreadsheets, uh, lots of um, different um, Outlook inboxes to be able to process emails from customers. And, um, you know, definitely uh, became a scaling challenge, as Kelly had mentioned, when we think about all the different channels that customers like to interact on. Uh, and one of our kind of tasks and goals of this project really was thinking about the right way to consolidate that workflow, make it really simple for Kelly's team to be able to provide great customer service to his uh, customers out there, but then also uh, really make sure we drive towards operational goals around efficiency and really again, scaling the, uh, scaling the business. Um, so what you'll see here is, um, for example, we know uh, lots of April Cornell customers like to communicate over email. Uh, and one of the first things that we wanted to do was set up uh, a basic email to case um, type workflow within Service Cloud here. 
So as the agent uh, logging in day to day, working through cases and customer interactions, you'll see here, um, the Service Club console gives us that full visibility, that full 360 review of the customer. Um, and you'll see here, we have um, ease of access into some of those main record types, uh, more specifically around the actual contact base or the customer base of April Purnell that you see here. But then also when we think about cases or inbound interactions coming from customers, um, you can see here, we configured uh, some of that email to case to give Kelly's team ease of flexibility to be able to manage those cases there. Uh, and so the customer that we're going to show today will, will perhaps say it's um, Sarah Jones, who's a loyal customer of April Cornell. She's perhaps uh, inquiring about a few questions on um, the return policy. And you'll see here once uh, Sarah actually sends the email through, using that email to case functionality, that case is actually automatically brought right into Salesforce and the whole entire workflow is configured um, so that Kelly's team can again have a full uh, screen pop and 360 degree view of not only Sarah and the relevant information around Sarah, uh, but also perhaps uh, previous cases, previous orders that might be applicable as well. We thought this was a significant milestone. I think the ability to be able to take data from that was traditionally sitting in, as I mentioned, a variety of systems, but having a single view and a single pane of glass here, really to make sure we can uh, establish a really uh, consistent and efficient workflow is a, a significant factor to the success of the project here. But as we look at it here, so as I mentioned, that case uh, perhaps gets, um, in this case, it's added to a simple list view of emails. It could also be routed through Omnichannel, which we'll show. Uh, but now the agent has that full uh, view of Sarah here. Um, as we walk through the different sections, you'll see here on the left side, we have basic contact information. So this is collected for perhaps uh, once Sarah becomes a customer and is placing orders, we can gain a full understanding of the contact information to get back in touch with Sarah on here. And the great thing around Salesforce and Service Cloud is again, that 360 degree view. So here's some perhaps previous cases or previous interactions. So regardless of the um, resource on Kelly's team that's working on the case, we can have a clear indication of perhaps the previous interactions that Sarah has had, and that can better inform us on how we should handle this case here. To really facilitate the process as well, um, there's features like Salesforce knowledge that we can use to help guide um, the agent through answering a variety of questions. In this case, we know it's around a return policy, so we can actually uh, go ahead and conduct a search to see if there's any knowledge articles or content that can help us. In this case, it's actually suggesting an article based on the subject here. And you'll see here, um, as that support resource, we can actually open up the knowledge article, um, get a clear indication of exactly um, what the return uh, policy looks like, uh, and then provide some guidance right back to the customer here. And a lot of these, again, as we're thinking about the different ways we can improve the efficiency, um, there's FAQs on the April Cornell website. There's ways we can bring that right into the console view, reduce any kind of swivel chair or toggling between systems. Uh, and then when we're ready to send an email right back to the customer here, instead of um, starting from scratch, perhaps, if it's, again, a more kind of common type um, inquiry here, we can actually leverage um, email templates. So you'll see um, here's one perhaps that we've created specifically around uh, the return policy and we can create that whole branded experience and then really truly make sure that we're uh, saving the team some time in terms of typing this in, but also making sure the information is the latest and greatest and is accurate as we continue our case management process. One thing I will mention as well, so we're looking at some of these records that um, are associated and, and, and kind of drive the actual initial workflow. So you'll see um, one of the benefits we have with the Service Club console, uh, it basically works um, very similar to Kind of a standard uh, browser application. So there's tabs that we can use to organize our workflows. You'll see this is uh, the contact record, and then we have the cases and all the other uh, relevant metadata that's associated to the actual contact here. And as we look to expand some functionality with Kelly and team, um, there's certainly capabilities we have to even extend and integrate to other systems. So uh, we could potentially pull in order information. So uh, we'll show you later today in the demo, but perhaps when a customer is inquiring about order status, uh, we can actually, again, pull information from other systems and then bring that information right to the console view for his team to use. Yeah, Eric, if, if, if you don't mind, um, I think one of the things that we said the other day, which I thought was um, a really valuable way to look at it, is that, you know, really good technology makes the customer experience. It sort of fades into the background. The technology fades into the background um, because the interaction is able to happen either efficiently or or you know, warmly in our case, and we really pride ourselves on our customer service. Um, so being able to work through the volume that we're having to give the extra attention that ca other cases that may be more challenging needed, 
was huge because yeah, I think it allowed sort of the personal touch that we have with our agents to um, shine through with people who are maybe having other issues. Um, so it's been huge for us in that customer satisfaction sense. And also just to work through the sheer volume of, hey, what's my order status? What's my, what is your return policy? What's your shipping policy? I mean, all these things take what, you know, something that was going to take 15 minutes or 20 minutes in the past would take probably under five minutes now. Um, and that's been huge for us. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. So really, the, I think the next channel we wanted to review was um, uh, addressing service cloud voice. So this was more around that email to case type workflow. We're still going to act perhaps as a customer, Sarah, in this case, but uh, we also wanted to demonstrate how do we think about bringing other channels like the voice channel into the service cloud console and into that workflow. Um, Kelly, I, th I think you said it perfectly, right? When the technology is working in the back end, it's really now more around providing uh, that customer experience and making sure we're uh, expediting and being efficient around that. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna actually go ahead and show you what that voice experience looks like. So what happens uh, when we actually now call into um, the April Cornell customer service line, um, show you a little bit on the customer experience, but then also um, really show you how we're empowering the agents to use that information, that full 360 review um, to be able to facilitate the conversation. Hi, thanks for contacting April Cornell. Please wait a moment while I connect you to a representative. Thank you for calling. Your call is very important to us and will be answered in the order it was received. So you'll see here, and I think customer experience was a huge factor here, right? Um, we wanna make sure that as soon as a customer calls in, we can quickly and easily um, go ahead and greet them, but make sure we get them in touch with a member of the support team uh, as quickly and easily as possible. Um, so let's quickly just hover right back into that same service cloud console. We showed a little bit around email the case, and we're now going to demonstrate with service cloud voice. Um, how did we also think about consolidating that workflow into a single view here? Uh, and one of the features is around omnichannel. So we can now um, think around the channels that we want to offer, and we can actually, in this case, uh, plug service cloud voice right into a kind of a single routing engine. Uh, we're going to show this across a few different channels today. We will review email. We're going to go through chat. Um, and again, Omnichannel can handle um, the understanding of exactly which agents are available to be able to handle that specific case. And then also even scale to the level of which skills are required to be able to um, facilitate a specific work line of our case here. And so we know um, in working with Kelly, uh, phone was um, certainly one of the big areas that we look to uh, kind of expand to once we have the foundation of Service Club built in, uh, really thinking about how do we now bring, again, that voice experience that we know uh, many April Cornell customers have that preference to be able to call in and just speak to someone live here. Uh, and so how do we bring that type of experience right into Service Cloud and make it really easy for the team to be able to scale, to be able to work remotely and have uh, a single um, kind of source where they can um, actually leverage and uh, use the application to be able to speak to someone here. Uh, and one of the great factors is um, the members of the Kelly support team are day-to-day -day in service cloud. So um, versus us kind of training on a separate application and getting everything kind of running, maintaining different tabs here with Omnichannels, it's really easy for his team to be able to go on Omnichannel, log on, uh, establish their presence on the voice channel, and then calls are kind of seamlessly routed right back into the team here. And you'll see the call controls here are now right within service cloud. So we can go on hold, we can go on mute, uh, we can add callers or transfer if we need to, if it's a more critical inquiry. Uh, and then as, as we explore that workflow, this uh, voice call record, they call it, is now what's driving that kind of screen pop and process for uh, the members of the team here. Notice again, as we showed with email, we can have uh, basic contact information. In this case, we're using uh, the phone number uh, or the ante of the customer to perform that lookup and pop the contact information here on the left. And then similarly, based on who we identify that customer is, we can also present perhaps which cases are associated um, to the specific inquiry here. And we'll say today, perhaps um, Sarah's inquiring around uh, the status of her order. Um, you'll notice as I'm speaking in real time here on the left, um, this is actually leveraging real-time voice to text transcription. So it gives us really unique capabilities, um, not only uh, historically to be able to go through and provide some analysis on the types of conversations that are happening, uh, but also uh, in real time. So um, as we're 
progressing this conversation naturally between the customer and the member of the support team. Um, Einstein features like next best action can always be triggered and providing more context to the team here. Uh, in this case, we might do a few lookups. We know Sarah might be a loyal customer, has inquired with the support team a few times. Uh, she might be offer, uh, rec um, She might be interested in some offers and promotions. Uh, and using some next best actions that we've created, we can provide some level of call scripting to be able to help guide and coach that uh, resource uh, on how to handle that situation. But then also, again, this is kind of more, again, that upsell, cross-sell, really maintaining excellent customer service here. Yeah, Eric, this was huge for us. Um, the phone piece was huge for us. We have a lot of customers that still contact us by phone. We send catalogs. It is a preferred method for contacting us for most people or for a lot of people. And at the um, beginning of COVID, we did not have um, a voice system. So this was huge, one, for being able, for, for us being able to access the platform and service customers, and then also to just um, manage expectations with customers we had a high volume coming in, things were going to, and this is you know, kind of where we started, but we had a high volume, things were going into voicemails. We were not able to get back to those voicemails with the existing team um, you know, for a couple of weeks. And so rightfully, I think people were upset about that eventually. And this, um, this tool has really allowed us, one, to work remotely. So to be able to dial in or to, to be able to access um, Service Cloud you know, from anywhere has been huge. We do have remote members of our team now. That was not a possibility before for us. And then um, I think too, just the friendliness of the interaction itself based on, I know who you are when you call. Uh, that, that was kind of a huge aha moment for us when we were originally talking about, well, what, what can this tool do for us? Why, you know, why is it valuable? Um, and that's been a big deal. And I know that our customers are super satisfied and I can tell you it's made life a heck of a lot easier for our service team too. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. And really along those lines, right, I think visibility and providing that customer experience was a huge factor. One thing I wanted to highlight with Service Cloud Voice here is that uh, we know there's several members of the support team at April Cornell, and during the day, they're working on a variety of different cases through different channels. And Omni Supervisor gives uh, the team that level of vi uh, visibility in real time to understand the capacity and workload um, to really understand which kind of cases are coming through. But as we showed um, with that real-time voice text transcription, um, Kelly and team also have visibility, right? So they can actually go ahead and monitor conversations. And this can really provide additional insight in real time, not to wait till the data becomes historical to make a decision, but uh, again, in real time, understand what that conversation looks like and then provide at that level of coaching, uh, perhaps back to a member of the team. Uh, but it also really helps them identify any kind of trends that may be happening. So um, and that also gives them insight again, um, versus more historically in real time and then find the guidance back. Yeah, Eric, and also, you know, things like um, call time per agent, you just mentioned coaching. We are able to coach uh, certain agents to wrap up calls a little bit quicker while still, you know, maintaining the friendliness and warmth that we want. So just those little metrics have allowed us to put some guardrails around, um, around our agents to have them just focus on the value added activity. Uh, and it's been huge, it's been, it's been really helpful. Awesome. So the, the last channel we kind of wanted to wrap up on here was um, thinking about um, a web chat application for April Cornell here. So um, as we showed with email the case and service cloud voice, um, we wanted a way um, to be able to offer um, support also on the chat channel, knowing lots of customers are now perhaps purchasing online on the April Cornell website here. Um, so what you're seeing here at the bottom right, this is a, a kind of a sample view of the um, live chat or Salesforce chat application that we've configured uh, for Kelly and team. And you'll see um, the kind of start off conversations we can do a little bit to understand perhaps uh, who this customer is and then um, once we're, um, we fill out a little bit of information, we can again, route the conversation or interaction to um, the agent with the right skills and availability. Just as we saw with earlier with voice, we can, can now have chats uh, routed through that single source and omni-channel. And then you'll see here, once uh, the member of the team accepts this chat, uh, we're really thinking around that screen pop, what type of information is going to be most relevant to really help this uh, member of the support team um, answer the questions and kind of complete and close the case out. And we know chat is a much different channel. The great thing is 
we can create and configure the workflows, whether it's email, whether it's voice, or whether it's chat here, um, provide that level of detail back to the agents. So they can be successful on the, on the actual interaction. Um, with chat, it's an interesting um, channel, and it's certainly, uh, as we've seen in some of the reports and metrics, which we'll talk about, um, certainly a growing channel and trend for the April Cornell organization. Um, and you'll see here, uh, we can actually have this kind of live two-way conversation, but also really be empowered with the data that we have in the console view, not having to tab out or swivel chair into other systems. Uh, and you'll see here, uh, based on the interaction or question from uh, that's coming back from the customer side, we actually have now the ability to understand what they're asking for and then um, have some workflow and guidance to be able to support that. So uh, as Sarah, perhaps I'll say, um, how quickly do you ship? And then you'll notice uh, from the agent perspective in the service club console, we again have that same uh, set of tools that we can use. We have knowledge articles that can um, describe perhaps how quickly we can actually ship something out. And as we saw with email to case, we have some email templates that can provide a more consistent and uh, more efficient process to provide a response. With real-time Salesforce chat, they have these quick texts or quick replies. And you'll see here, uh, we actually have one automatically created to address a question around how quickly uh, we're able to ship out products. And then you'll see here, we're able to, again, expedite that process. We are still empowered with that full view of exactly who Sarah is, her previous orders, her previous interactions. Uh, and again, regardless of the channel now that Sarah's coming through, we're gonna have a single view, um, be able to really uh, provide more proactive service um, back over to her. Kelly, any thoughts on the chat channel and um, how you've seen that kind of scale and grow over time? Yeah, definitely. Um, chat is, is definitely growing for us. Um, you know, at least as a consumer myself, I think it's the easiest way to talk to an agent and get quick answers. So a lot of chat is about case deflection, about managing your volume. And I think having it right here and having the customer's information really available has made these interactions really efficient. So we're able to control volume right now through chat. And so we're asking ourselves, how do we deflect a little bit more? Can we maybe make the phone number less um, apparent on the homepage and things like that so that we can guide people more towards these quick answers that you're talking about, Eric, just for efficiency's sake, just so a lot of times these are pretty rote responses. What's your shipping? What's your return policy? Um, what's your sizing? Our, our main three. Um, and so to be able to have a function where that answer, if somebody's not finding it on their own, where that answer is really readily available in chat format is a big deal. Fantastic. And really, as we think about all, all the channels and uh, as we've been partnering with Kelly and team, um, certainly measuring performance has been a huge factor and be able to identify those trends, the types of use cases and content that are going to be most effective to be able to support this. Uh, and so we wanted to quickly wrap up the demonstration, just thinking around um, reports and analytics here. So uh, we've created a, a lot of different views for Kelly and team around some of those important metrics. We certainly know customer satisfaction is first and foremost uh, with any um, inquiry coming from a customer. Um, and then we certainly know from an internal perspective, day-to-day um, -day operations of the support team, understanding things like first contact resolution and handle time, um, certainly a big factor to see how we can improve and optimize the performance of the team. Uh, and then certainly as we showed today, um, Kelly and his team are supporting multiple channels. So it's really important for us to know what is that kind of uh, uh, split in channels and perhaps trends as we uh, discussed earlier, if you notice chat is trending up, are there ways we can improve the chat experience or other modules or tools within the service club console that can help the uh, agent succeed there. But you're, you're just seeing a kind of a quick snapshot of some of the reports and dashboards that uh, we look to kind of build and provide a more complete view over to Kelly. And we know traditionally this was um, certainly a challenge. I think as we evaluated early on the project was um, the number of systems and really trying to tie in data points, not only interactions like calls and emails, but then also case information. And um, one of the major successes I think we've had with this project is having again that consistent data model, have a true notion of a case and a contact, and then really building upon that data as we aggregate it across the, uh, the case management process. Uh, Kelly, any thoughts on your side in terms of um, the power of the analytics, what you've been able to do there? Yeah, I think it's allowed us to focus our efforts, Eric. Um, one major one that is not up here in the first four is just average case resolution time. So understanding that, you know, in some cases we were waiting 10 days to call somebody back, um, because we're just working through the caseload, uh, you know, now everything is under one. I think that metric sort of speaks for itself for us, but just being able to understand, well, what goes into getting that under one? 
Um, is it our volume in this, or our, our case resolution time in this channel is this high? And, our, and, and then how do we focus our efforts to put more people on phone or more people on chat? Um, and then understand how maybe certain deflection tactics could it help improve this as well. Uh, it's been a, yeah, like I said, a lot of this has just been a big deal for us. It's sort of a game changer across the board. Um, but analytics is really helping us identify more specifically what our issues are and not just think, hey, this whole thing generally is a challenge. Fantastic. I think it's actually a great segue. I'm gonna pass it back over to Jess. I think we're gonna actually talk about some of the outcomes from the, uh, the initial project here. Perfect, thanks, Eric. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Uh, the our results tab? Okay, perfect. Um, so as Eric said, this is a great segue. And, and just to touch on kind of what we just showed there, I mean, um, we've got, you know, folks on our team that have been in the telephony space, the contact center space for, you know, 25 plus years and um, service cloud voice, although, you know, it looks very seamless. And as Kelly said, you know, it really works well in the background to uh, ensure that the customers, you know, don't know all of the, the back end kind of details that are going on. It uh, just makes a really seamless experience. Um, it's an incredibly game changing, you know, technology that we're seeing a lot of customers adopt uh, as they're looking at, you know, getting all of their different channels in, in one place in one solution to uh, help with efficiencies gained as, as Kelly kind of mentioned here. So um, Kelly, I know we've got a few points on the slide here that you already kind of alluded to in some of the uh, results that we're seeing with uh, the service cloud solution and the service cloud voice solution, but we'd love to hear you touch more about, you know, just that visibility into current state, um, really more about those efficiencies and um, kind of what, what you see is um, the real game changers for, for you all with the solution that we put together. Yeah, in, in the vis visibility to the current state, um, I would say that, you know, before we were kind of anecdotally hearing, um, because we did not have a robust metric or um, analytics platform for uh, what our performance was on the service side, we were hearing, oh, you know, I haven't heard back from you. It's been 10 days or it's been two weeks or something like that. And now to be able to say, well, all of our cases are being solved within an amount of time that we feel is okay, um, or all case resolution on average is below one day. I think that's, it's just, it's a really big difference. Now the question is, is well, how do we refine, you know, and how do we get better and by channel, or how do we maybe automate a couple more things to get customers who are having more trouble, um, the, the attention that they really need. Um, so I think visibility into current state from day one was huge because we knew we wanted to fix stuff. And then it's also giving us visibility consistently to, to, to keep on that journey of um, continuous improvement. Should I keep going through each one of these, Jess? No, I think, you know, we did touch on, on these a bit. I was just going to say, you know, we talked to a lot of uh, different customers, to your point, Kelly, who are really just looking for that visibility and laying that foundation. And uh, what we look to do is obviously continue to measure that with, you know, the, the reports that we help build, you know, early on in the process to, to give your team the insights they need to, to make the decisions on uh, whether it's, you know, headcount and hiring or um, what are the areas that we need to look to improve and, and how to best do that. So um, we're super yeah. excited about continuing to see some more of these metrics um, come to fruition as we collect that data and, and measure the success together. Yeah, that, that's a huge one, Jess. Um, you mentioned headcount and capacity planning right there at the end. You know, we had had, and we may end up going through with this anyways, but we had had budgeted somebody, a new employee for this year um, based on capacity challenges that we were having last year. We haven't had to hire an employee because of the efficiency gained um, by bringing on Salesforce. You know, hopefully we end up hiring that person and continue to grow the business. But I think just to know that there is, um, you know, maybe a trade-off in efficiency to um, uh, being able to handle your volume. And it's just greatly increased our capacity. So not having to make that decision ultimately has been a net benefit to the company um, for now. And we know that we're going to bring on anybody new into an environment where, um, you know, they're able to use a tool that has these sort of universal um, skills and transferable skills for them too. So that's also another big thing that's um, really been important for our team. Awesome. Yeah, it's a definitely exciting to see. And I know we, we talked a bit about, you know, how that really has affected the bottom line um, during, you know, the, the last year. So 
Awesome. So with that, I mean, um, what's next for April Cornell? We've, we've obviously um, laid this foundation together and we're super excited about it, but um, what do you see as kind of the next steps, uh, not only in the customer experience um, side, which I think we've kind of highlighted in blue here, but also as you alluded to earlier, more of those backend processes that um, aren't necessarily affecting the customer so much, but definitely help with the operational aspects of um, how the business works today. Definitely. Um, the next big project for us is probably uh, taking on ERP and doing inventory management, visualization, uh, data visualization, and tying in our finances to that to get a really accurate picture in real time with where the company is at in the back end of the company, essentially. I, I would say that our decision to take on CRM enabled us to now make this decision, this next decision. Um, so I, I think we feel really good about going into that, knowing that we can handle the volume of customers and that that volume of customers has really allowed us um, to grow in such a way to kind of fund the next decision too. So um, that's been a, been a really big deal. And then, you know, the other big pieces that we're considering is if we're going to change back end, are we going to think about front end changes? So that's where Commerce Cloud um, comes into play. I think probably in the next 18 months, we'll consider what the front end of April Cornell looks like. And, and you know, I think when you choose a partner like Salesforce, you're saying, well, hey, I'm doing this today and I may add on um, to what they, to what I may add on their tools to what we offer um, in the future. And Commerce Cloud is certainly in that discussion for us. Um, and also, I, I would say marketing cloud is in that discussion for us, although, um, you know, maybe a little further out. Uh, we do have retail stores. So I think thinking about unifying customer data at the retail experience uh, is an important thing for us, albeit, you know, probably not until next year. And then chatbots, I think, are just a further step in um, efficiency, essentially. How do I manage more tickets or how do I manage volume um, with questions that may be easy to answer? with a system that still feels um, human and warm and, and communicating sort of the brand's um, warmth uh, through chat. So all of those things I think are, they're really scaling conversations and you know investing in the CRM side of things has given us the ability to talk about scale. Absolutely, and I think you married kind of um the exact amount of transformation, if you will, with, you know, keeping with the, the brand of April Cornell and that warm, personable touch, um, which I think is, is critical to obviously the success you guys have seen um, and kind of laying that foundation and then slowly continuing, as you said, to, to innovate on the, the Salesforce platform. Um, well, we're super excited about what's next uh, for you guys and seeing the, the continued growth. Um, we've talked a bit about, you know, kind of the um, journey that we've been on together, but, you know, if you were to kind of look back in time and, and do this all again, um, what would you tell folks on like how to get started and, and how to kind of go through this process um, to take on this journey? Yeah, I, I made a bit of it, the pitch for this um, uh, previously, but I think, you know, from my angle, focusing on the customer was the right place to start. So CRM felt like the right solution to be thinking about um, to handle customer volume and to make sure people were as satisfied as we possibly could make them. So given that premise, you know, we went into our research phase and looked at different solutions. We looked at HubSpot, we looked at Zoho. Um, then we allocated budget. So we did our research, you know, part of the research um, that we did was just looking at what's the information out there available on pricing for, for these various competitors. And do we feel that that's justified given the size of our business? So we felt comfortable with what we we're hearing on the high end or, or um, on the low end of, of any of the pricing that we were getting back. And then through our sales process with Salesforce and Jess, we understood that we were going to be comfortable with the investment that it was going to take to stand the system up. I think the next thing once we were a go on, on Salesforce and working with Neuroflash was to understand that these systems take effort from the people that you're asking to use them. So we had to put together a change management plan. I think for us, what that meant was kind of assigning somebody. We had somebody internally from a technical side that could help us uh, drive the technical solution, worked very close with Neuroflash. That was a huge help. Um, and then assigning one of our service agents to really go into uh, the trailhead um, 
demos and step-by-steps to understand how she was going to interact with Salesforce as a supervisor on a day-to-day level. And then we tasked her with training a second within the department. So we had a trainer and a train the trainer sort of situation within our service department. So we felt that that was going to set them up for success on day one, because we had folks who were a little bit older in the service department. They were going to need some handle hand holding. They had been in, in this legacy system for a while. And within a week they were up and going. And I can't tell you how many thank yous I got from her being like, my life's so much easier. Thank you so much. I know I was grumpy last week, but I really appreciate it. Um, so things have worked out really well. People are, people are really, really happy. They feel like the work is just easier and a bit more rewarding, to be honest. Um, the last piece on here, I think it's just understanding your scope of work, understanding that um, if you want to do chat, that has to be included in your scope of work and understanding that uh, the SV, SCV, Service Cloud Voice, is uh, not the same as Service Cloud. So I think just understanding what your scope of work is and um, what you need to get at the end of the day. And um, I think Neuroflash was really good at helping identify those things and just making sure, hey, you know, here's what's included, here's what's not included. And we can look at this as in a phased approach. So for us, we knew we were going to stand up Service Cloud, you know, within, I think it was eight weeks, Jess was, you know, it, right. it happened pretty, <laughs> it happened pretty dang quickly, which was great and allowed us to capture some of the uh, demand during the holiday season last year, which was a, you know, again, it was a big deal for us. Um, but, but then we knew that we had other pieces that we needed to um, kind of put to the finish line. And so I think understanding your um, scope in that way, both from a time and cost perspective and, and the people the time from the, your internal people to do that is really important because they're going to be pulled away from other things. And um, it's important to get this to the finish line, I think, as quickly as possible because you don't, you don't want them to be putting their time in sort of forever. Um, and I think Neuroflash and their sort of report card system that they have um, where they send us weekly updates on status of the project were super helpful to, for us knowing that we were moving towards that finish line. Absolutely. Well, I, I think, um, you know, it's been an awesome journey together. And I think change management, as you mentioned, is such a critical part, especially in today's world where we're not all necessarily in offices to just um, ensure that, you know, your team members are feeling comfortable with the change ahead. And ultimately, as you said, um, it's going to be a positive one um, as you kind of go through the, the growing pains and get to the, the light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, we're super excited about uh, the partnership that we forged together and just overall hearing the positive comments and success. Um, and want to thank you again, Kelly, for joining us to, to talk through the journey today. Uh, with that uh, being said, and we've got about 10 minutes left, Michaela, I will hand it over to you to help uh, field any questions that we might have from the audience here. Thank you. And thank you everyone for such a great session. So let's dive into our Q&A. So our first question here, is your entire company on the omni-channel phone or just those that are customer facing? We're looking at migrating our current phone system and wondering if everyone would need this or just those that are using Salesforce. Yeah, for us, it's just our service team. Yeah. And um, eventually it'll be our service team uh, for our direct to consumer channel. So our, our e-commerce business and then our B2B business too. Um, but for right now, it's just the service team. Thanks, Kelly. Our next question here um, is, when should customers think about engaging with the partner? Um, I can take that one, Michaela. So um, I would say, you know, as Kelly kind of alluded to uh, early on in the process, and, and we work very closely with um, Kelly's um, Salesforce AE, um, Claire, who, you know, obviously discuss with us the needs um, of April Cornell, but really early on in kind of demoing the solution, uh, bare bones for the team, uh, we were involved in just understanding from the get-go kind of the, the critical aspects and requirements that the team needed. And especially given that we wanted to launch in a, in a shorter time frame, um, it was definitely beneficial for us to be a part of the, the discussions that you know the Salesforce team was going through from a discovery aspect. Um, so we really like to be brought in early. Um, and even if there's just uh, discussions that you're having internally around how do we get started with something like Service Cloud with a contact center solution, with a telephony solution. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, Nerdflash has about 25 plus years experience 
in the legacy telephony space. Um, if you've got a legacy solution, we probably have someone who had worked there in the past. So um, we're definitely happy to just even advise based on current state and help um, provide a roadmap together on, on what an approach could look like to kind of shift to these digital solutions. So um, I'd say early on is uh, definitely great and I think saves you time in the, in the long run um, for kind of where you're looking to go. Thanks, Jess. Our next question here is for Kelly. Um, how have your employees enjoyed working with Salesforce, Service Cloud, and Service Cloud Boys? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think they've really enjoyed it. I know that they've really enjoyed it compared to the solution that we had previously. Um, and I think one of the sort of, you know, hard to quantify elements of this has been there's we've been able to retain people. Uh, so our retention rates have gone up and, and it's always a pain in the butt to be training somebody new in any position, but especially in service where brand is so important to us. So our employees are, they seem happier. It's again, it's like a transferable skill. So if they go somewhere else, they have this skill set that they've built around the Salesforce ecosystem. Not that I want them to leave, but you know, we are now offering a better I think a better work environment because we're giving them a skill that they could bring elsewhere and we're also just making their job easier. So I've gotten like a million thank yous from them on making this decision, despite it being a bit challenging uh, when we were getting going. So I think they're super psyched on how it's worked and they're psyched about, you know, things like chatbot and how we continue to evolve the tool, evolve, uh, evolve the tool and our supervisors like She's, a, she's dynamite. She's like figuring out all the solutions. She's figuring out what's next and how to make it a little bit more of a marketing engine, I think, um, than when she started. And, and just to have her engaged in that way is a big deal for us because, um, you know, service is really key to, to keeping the business going. Thanks, Kelly. Our next question here is, we understand the timeline was quick for April Cornell with the Salesforce implementation, but what is a typical timeline to set up you know, service cloud um, and service cloud voice. Yeah, I can take that one there. So um, and I think, you know, Kelly mentioned earlier, I think today, you know, identifying that scope of work and the requirements and the features and functions uh, certainly play a really big role here. Uh, but really typically our projects, you know, I think Kelly mentioned, right, we were up and running with service cloud within kind of that six to eight week time frame. Uh, that's typically where we see most of our projects lie. And again, that depends on the types of features and functions we're building out. But we're not talking about a multi-year type project here. And I think that's really one of the benefits and the power of the platform with Salesforce here is that we can really truly identify what is that minimum viable product or that phase one that we want to start with, build something out, get the users to adopt it and handle that kind of change management strategy. And then once we identify new features that we want to roll out, those can come in subsequent phases here. Thanks, Eric. Our next question here is, what channels do you see customers first start out with and then expand to? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, as we addressed, I think um, some of the themes around the demo today, uh, we try to focus primarily on where are the customers today and then also try to recognize this trend. So we know um, customer service is still really dominant around uh, the voice channel and customers calling in. So really trying to think around ways we can leverage service cloud voice, create that single view within service cloud and build uh, the experience for the agents and the customers there. Uh, and then certainly we focus on other channels that are also traditionally very, very um, uh, favorable for customers, things like email to case, like we showed, web to case. Um, I will mention, I think as Kelly uh, also uh, described earlier, certainly that trend more into digital channels is up and coming. So we're helping lots of customers move um, even from phone and uh, traditional email channels now into real-time engagement on websites with Salesforce chat, driving some of that automation with SMS and bots there. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunities. It's always around where are the customers um, most kind of frequently going to and where is that volume? And then how do we build the right workflow to support that in Service Cloud? You know, Eric, we obviously went with Service Cloud to start and then we held off on getting voice for, I don't know what it was, Jeff, it was a month or six weeks or something like that. We should have gotten voice earlier. I, I, I will say that. It, it was weird having two fractured systems like that, and especially because we didn't have a voice system. So I would say if anybody's thinking about that, definitely consider bringing on voice earlier. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Eric. Um, so we are at time. And so this will be our last question of the day. Any questions we didn't get to, we'll, answer, we'll reach out to you personally and answer them. So our last question is, how do you feel your customer satisfaction has improved by implementing Salesforce? 
Um, I think really, and, and this is going to sound so basic, but, you know, having 10 days to call somebody back and then having all cases resolved under one day, that, that to me is just being able to speak to people's needs on a day-to-day -day level, on a sale-to-sale -sale level, just way better. Um, so we know that customers are more satisfied because our retention rates are up. Our email file is significantly bigger um, than it was, and our customer growth is um, continuing on the same trajectory that it was before. So people are, I think, are happier and happier with the experience and we're able to handle the volume. Um, so I, I think the proof is sort of in the pudding. You know, we have, we, we still got a ways to go. We still want to do better and better um, and keep satisfying our customers and get them to come back and, and really be thrilled with the April Cornell experience. This is for sure given us a foothold to make that happen. Thanks, Kelly. So thank you everyone so much for joining our webinar today. We know your time is important and we appreciate you spending this time with us. We want to help you. If you're looking to get started or you need help on your Salesforce journey, be sure to reach out to Neuroflash. If you're interested in learning more about how we can help you, please reach out to Jessica Asieto with any questions and to set up a time to talk. Her contact information is on this slide here and I'll be sending the recording out to you all afterwards as well. Thank you again for joining us today and we're looking forward to talking with you soon. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you.